Hi, uh, Zeke Coleman. You're the uh, Senior Director for Product Marketing at Adara. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of uh, Focuswire Pulse at the end of August 2021. Thanks ever so much. Thank you for having me. Okay, so there's there's lots of reasons why we wanted to talk to you. And, um, you know, by way of explaining to uh, viewers your background, a, a specialist in uh, DMOs, you might say, because you were a director of data intelligence at Visit Savannah prior to your time at uh, Adara. So you're a, a very useful person for us to talk to for this today. So broadly, if we can start off, what, what would you say the kind of the, the, the state of destination marketing is in travel? You know, how savvy are DMOs and tourism boards with regards to thinking about technology and how it applies to their marketing activity? I think they're really savvy, actually. Uh, in fact, the, the pandemic sort of brought on a new level of savvy because um, we had to figure out smarter ways to speak to people in an appropriate way. We couldn't just blast anything out there. And we had to think about where, where are people? Are they ready to hear from us? Um, are they wanting to travel? And so data become, became really important and DMOs actually started to innovate quite a bit. Um, while that happened, though, laws were changing, legislations coming about for privacy, and uh, you know, it it the the innovation was being put to the test by uh, legislation, and we had technology changes with Apple and Google, you know, shifting things around. So, I, but I would say the state of the industry is quite good in that it's 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 really advanced a lot in the last year or so. And um, before we move on to some specific things, Zeke, I don't know if you, you have some perspective on this. I mean, it, the rest of the industry that we write about, online travel agencies and hotels and airlines have been very proficient over the years with using kind of paid for marketing in terms of pay-per-click advertising and performance marketing. Generally, do DMOs follow that trend or do they kind of behave in a different kind of way? Somewhat different, right? Because a DMO is is unique in that OTAs have a cash register, right? But DMOs, we we promote a product that we don't transact on, and so it becomes you know a little tricky to figure out is your pay per click stuff actually valuable if you don't have the data to see did anyone transact after they clicked? So um, so so it's kind of hit or miss. It depends on on their implementation of data and their visibility into performance. Uh, so, so similar, but, but different. Okay. What are some of the um, techniques that they have been using with technology up until now? If we can say, you know, the kind of imme the immediate period pre-pandemic and especially over the last couple of years, I mean, what were they doing in particular that was perhaps unique to them that married marketing and technology? Yeah. Yeah. So one thing is just leveraging uh, uh, like location data, for example, to figure out when did someone arrive into their market? So that's really powerful because as you know, talking about this cash register thing, you can't see when someone online is, is clicking confirm travel or uh, uh, booking to actually see that their mobile device ended up in your city and then to watch where it went around, what points of interest to be able to tell that story to your local stakeholders is huge. And so DMOs have done that very well over the last couple of years. And uh, the kinds of insights and stories and uh, yeah, just learnings are incredible from the difference between a, a commuter that's, that's crossing into your border for work to someone who came, stayed at the top hotel and went to all your top restaurants. I mean, I think uh, DMOs have gotten quite proficient at doing that. And they would, as, as well as that, I, I know we're going to come on to some of those challenges that are emerging around location data in a moment, Zeke, but uh, within that context of what they were doing with being able to monitor when people were actually in a location, were they using that activity and knowledge of that activity to kind of remarket things to those uh, tourists once they were in destination? Yeah, yeah. Well, I will say that aspect of it, less was being done much less okay. um, and, and in that regard we're a little bit behind the eight ball but I, but there are some uh, in, especially in the last year that were uploading the data of those users the mobile device IDs to say like a Facebook or something and you can match that phone that was tied to that Facebook account to that user 
And then once you do that, you now have not just that one phone, but you have their computer, their laptop, their tablet. I mean, really anywhere where that user has ever logged in or is still logging in, you have them, in, including when they've used Facebook to log into other platforms, which you know is pretty common. So really, really powerful way to, to reach the right folks who have visited your destination in the past. And just lastly on this then, Zeke, I mean, how collaborative using those techniques for marketing, very, very data-driven techniques, how collaborative are DMOs with, say, a hotel? Because a lot of the a lot of that kind of browsing activity would happen within a hotel. So there is there is or there has been an opportunity for the DMO and the hotel or maybe an activity provider to collaborate on that marketing, perhaps. Totally, totally. Yeah, because you can if you actually observe the the user at the hotel. And let's just say you you string together a, a list of uh, certain uh, star level hotels, so all luxury hotels, for instance, and the room rate is above four hundred dollars a night. Like it's just really ritzy. Uh, and if you take the users that went there, you're now identifying a unique audience, and you can work with that hotel to drive revenue uh, at a more accurate level because you don't want to waste money and show you don't want to show that ad to me. Because I can't pay for that hotel. <laughs> yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. It's you know, it's the right message in the right time. It's that adage that's been around in all kinds of marketing for a long time. So, um, uh, conscious of the time. So, there are some changes coming, which is a really important part of both what you do, but has a huge impact on DMOs and the and the wider industry. But in particular, what DMOs are doing in their marketing. So, talk us through what those changes are first of all, Zeke. Yeah, yeah, I can talk it through with just a brief story. I was, it was actually this March, uh, I was talking to our board about some of what we just discussed, that we can leverage location data to talk to people who came to your hotel. And I got back and saw an update from Apple, which said that uh, they're about to take away those mobile device IDs for all Apple users. And now you have to opt in. And if you have an iPhone, you probably have seen it say, you know, allow app to track or ask app not to track pop up all over the place frequently. Well, that, um, that shook me up. And I began to call all my friends, all my engineering friends and say, what are you guys doing about this? Cause this is, this is going to hurt us. Right. And aside from a few boilerplate answers, I, I got one friend to tell me this is a big problem. This is a huge problem. And so that, that was one, and there's one coming in September, which is going to be like a digital apocalypse, if you will, for location data, which is, you know, I, I hope the, the industry can can uh, do something in response. But unfortunately, Apple is huge. Google is huge. And when these big juggernauts are saying when they're kind of duking it out and, and uh, helping to advance user privacy, but also kind of juggling for probably position with one another, we get caught in the middle. And so. Uh, that's that's yeah that's a big deal and it, it's interesting because i would i presume and i say that i'm only presuming that in some respects privacy and security advocates are going yes this is terrific but yeah your clients and dmos and whoever are thinking ah crap what are we going to do right yeah yeah and so like we were saying earlier right we we just got to a place where the the pandemic sort of forced us to be much smarter much more strategic much more surgical in what we do and and therefore more efficient and one really cool aspect of that is now kind of at in limbo and taken away and you know this is where dmos have to be smart and ask good questions and i think everyone that that leverages any kind of location it is ask good questions because you know, you will still have some location data. The problem is that the quality of it is going to plummet and the volume of it is going to plummet. And so if you think you can do the same things that you used to do and have the same kind of positive effects, uh, you're going to be mistaken. And Apple is making no, you know, they're saying we are taking it from being able to know that you went to Starbucks and this, you know, event to you're in this city only at best, maybe in this region or state. So they, they are saying that you can look on their website. It's a, uh, it's quite, it's quite a change. And so it, but if as a DMO, if you go in thinking, oh, I can market this hotel at this luxury level. I mean, <laughs> if you'd use that data in that way, it's not going to produce the result that you formerly had seen. 
So does this mean then that we will see a wholesale revert back to, you know, in inverted commas, old school marketing activity by DMOs? Or you mentioned the word smart just then, or are they going to be smart about how to collect data to enable them to continue this technique, but in a different kind of way? That's really, really great question. So I think the latter is that they're going to have to collect data with, with permission and they're going to have to basically become the owner of the data. You see with location data, we're having to buy the data from not just, you know, the likes of Apple, but aggregators, you know, some Sudoku app that has ads in it that you play and it, why does it need your location? It doesn't need your location, but, but they, that gets sold. That's why those apps exist. And what Apple is saying is no more. And so if you're dependent on someone else to get that information and you're getting it without their permission, one, the quality is already kind of low, but then two, uh, that's going away and you lose power of that. So if you can bring that data on, on your own with direct relationships with partners and then own it, own that throughout the process, no one can take it from you. You, you almost make that process sound easy. I imagine it probably isn't. It isn't easy, but it is doable and it's, and it's done. So that's kind of what Adar does is we actually have the technology. So that's what we've been doing for years, right? We've been taking on American Airlines, Choice Hotels, Ritz-Carlton, Spirit, uh, different, different data partners. We're tokenizing their data, basically making it pseudonymous. So you don't know the person behind the data, but you know what they're doing. And then we activate it, measure with it and report on it what a destination would want to do and really what all businesses are going to want to do is have the technology, which we actually leverage out, have the technology to onboard data, have it in a sort of data hub and an identity graph where you're matching people's activities to what they do. Kind of like we talked about earlier with Facebook, only you're doing it yourself and you essentially become the Adara of your destination's data is kind of the way that I like to think about it. So it is easy if you already have the technology built out, but to build that technology, yeah, that is a bit more complex and complicated. So you mentioned there, were, there's, there, there, there was an update earlier this year. There's this one coming in a few weeks after, uh, just a couple of weeks after this event now. Uh, are there any other immediate kind of changes to that process of location marketing and data kind of analysis that, are, are already being discussed as coming quite soon. Yeah, so so Apple just, I mean, it's almost like every month or every week or so they're announcing something new. So if you just look up, I would just follow them. They, in their keynote in June, that's when they announced this thing coming in September, Apple's private relay, where they essentially create a VPN for all of your web browsing activity so that they hide your uh, IP address and your location, if you will, from the website that you're going to and they hide the website from themselves. Uh, well, they just announced something with um, child, something about um, uh, child protection, something like that, but they're advancing constantly with this privacy agenda. And, and I think that you just wanna keep your eye on Apple's news ticker and, and yes, there, there's stuff coming. I don't know all of it, but uh, it, it Seems like every week or so something's announced. What are what are some of the other kind of smart things that destination marketers are doing, whether it's just in their general marketing activity or stuff that they're doing with data that's that's noteworthy and and uh, also worth sharing today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think measurement is 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 something that's smart that's happening. So people are measuring. Let's just say like, so formerly, right? What I was saying is you could see the location. So you could see this phone and it goes with me to sleep. It's on the plane. It's in the hotel. Okay, that's going away. Well, then how do you know what I do? Well, there's another thing that I do and carry that also tracks my activities, my credit card. And so it goes with me on the plane. I swipe it, goes to the hotel. I swipe it, goes to the game or the restaurant or whatever. I swipe it. You can pinpoint both my billing address you can connect it with the billing address of the business that I'm at to tell where, how far I traveled, where I went throughout a destination and actually kind of do the same kind of location, if you will. It'll be more transactional, but cookie crumb trail of what someone's doing and, uh, and do it anonymously so that you're not, you know, you're not actually knowing the person, but you're getting the insights of 
What are people doing in a destination? Why that matters is consumer behavior is changing incredibly. It's over the last year, it's gone up and down. And with the news cycle from uh, pandemic related news to social unrest to even natural disasters, I mean, that kind of volatility to be able to get a, you know, a view into how are people changing in my destination, in my market? Are they going inside of a, a, a museum? Are they actually doing that again? Or are they a little more nervous? Are they not wanting to do that? Has outdoor activities, has that picked up? which we know it has, right? But but to validate it with that, that credit card data and that transaction is very powerful. So I think that's a really innovative thing you can do in a privacy compliant way. And, and, and last of all, I mean, it's always good to, I mean, we've just looked forward slightly, but looking forward forward, you know, when we're talking two or three years time, I mean, there must be some technical advancement advancements that must really once destination marketers and the marketing teams within those organizations start thinking about use cases, which must be really quite exciting, whether it's something from biometrics to digital skins and all those kind of things. It opens up a whole kind of world of possibilities. I mean, are there any in particular that you that you can identify? It is, yeah, there's a lot. So I think with with data, we're getting, we're realizing how much there is which is what's the privacy advocates are why they're pushing like they are. And I'm, I'm actually glad they are. I think it's great. Um, but because of that, your people are realizing things like vaccine passports, for example, that you can actually connect the, and, and the reason that you need to is because you could have a card that says you got the vaccine and it not be real. So how do I validate one that you really did get the vaccine? And then two, that it's really you that got the vaccine. So I need to connect probably some sort of online identity, maybe your wall, your uh, local pharmacy, you log in with the actual uh, database for, for vaccines. And if you can link those two and authenticate that, then you can show something that says, hey, I got it for real. Uh, this is not pretend. And now we're, we're, all, we're all good if for the person or the business that cares to know. So I think that that sort of thing, identity resolution in a privacy compliant way is, is kind of some of the stuff that we could expect. And I think really destinations are about to, I think we're going to see a bit of a, I don't know if renaissance is the right word, but just kind of a light year jump in, in what we're both able to do, willing to do and realize we need to do. Because like I said, because we don't have cash registers, but we we work as the sort of the marketing arm for the destination, we have to be accountable though for the things that we're investing in. And so more and more we have to shift from the soft metrics like likes and clicks and click-through rates and views, which hoteliers and uh, stakeholders and community leaders, they don't care about that, uh, to what they understand without having to get a digital marketing degree, revenue, uh, ADR, uh, time in the market, impact to the market. How are you managing things like over tourism? How are you using data to be smart about our market to make it great for residents and great for uh, our visitors? So uh, I think there's a long road ahead of us, but I think we're getting there. Uh, and, and just finally, I mean, in, in, interestingly, I, I, I would imagine there are many DMOs around the world. As you said, you know, they're quite savvy. They've done you know, they've got their tech chops over the last couple of years. But some of the things that we've just been discussing in this last five minutes just kind of changes the role of the marketer in general now, much more than what it was traditionally. Would that be accurate? It does. It does. It totally does. Yeah, I think um, you're <laughs> a role. So what's funny is I was the director of data intelligence at Visit Savannah. And in, immediately when that that was, you know, out there, we got all these calls. Hey, hey, how do, what do you do? Can you give me the, the job description? We want to create the same thing. And uh, and so I think that really you're going to see a lot more of these data roles, chief data officer um, at, at DMOs, and I'm, we're already starting to see it. So uh, it's expanding for sure. Uh, Zeke Coleman from Adara, thank you very much for joining us on Focus Wire Pulse. Really appreciate thank it. Thank you, Kevin.